Ach, mit dem Fendi. The bell. I did not hear. I uh, hope you had pleasant dreams. Uh, uh, me sleeping after lunch keeps me young and cheerful. When uh, did your master come back? Yesterday. They come, <laughs> they go. Perhaps tomorrow they leave. Perhaps they will. Perhaps they will not. Who knows? Only Allah and police. <laughs> Allah knows. The police try to know. <laughs> Mr. Harmon is well again? Oh, so well like newborn child. My lady and him live like a pigeon on a honeymoon. Ibrahim! Ibrahim! Quiet. Ibrahim! My lady is calling. Ahmed Effendi, what a surprise. Forgive me for detaining Ibrahim, madame. I asked him not to answer. But why? Won't you come in and have tea with us? We've been away from Egypt a whole year, you know, and my husband would love to see you again. Thank you, I'd rather not. Well, tea on the terrace for three, Ibrahim, as Ahmed Effendi won't join us. What my lady wants, she must have. I'm very happy to see you again, Ahmed Effendi. You're looking quite prosperous. Very European. If that can be considered a compliment. I was promoted. I'm now captain of police. I've been waiting for you for a long time. Do you come as an officer of the police or as an old friend? As both, madame. As an ardent reader of detective stories, I know I shouldn't talk to a police officer unless I'm in the presence of my solicitor. I have no solicitor at hand, but I do have a husband. Shouldn't we take him into our confidence? I'm afraid it might cause him embarrassment. It sounds rather ominous. Come, what's the mystery? Have you ever seen this box before, madame? I don't think so. Why? It was found in this garden. Arabic work, isn't it? What a lovely thing. It is rather a complicated history. At one time, it was in the possession of a man named Hamza, now dead. Before that, it seems it belonged to someone called Baruli. Mahmoud Baruli. Baruli? Oh, yes, I remember him. A rather dubious young man, wasn't he? Whatever happened to him? thought you might be able to tell us, madame. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you. But perhaps my husband might know. He knew him, too. Mr. Armin is a fine man, a great gentleman. I owe him very much. And so I would rather he did not hear from me how Mahmoud Baruli died. It would be kind of madame if you were to tell him. Before you visit my office. I refuse to come? You have no choice. Let's see. What are my plans for this afternoon? Oh, yes, I've ordered tea on the terrace. And that's very important to us British, you know. And then there's an old friend of my husband's visiting us from London, Samaya Isaacson. No, no, I'm afraid it would be most inconvenient today. You'll give me till tomorrow? Tomorrow at noon. I shall be waiting. And I shall be there. You're most kind, I'm with Fendi, to give me time to arrange my affairs. You're a true friend of my husband. I thank you, really. Everything is perfect. I had such a restful day. And you? I was in the garden. Yes, I saw you. This is a wonderful vantage point, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your undivided attention?
You always have, darling. We are waiting breathlessly. Yeah. Well, here it is. A letter to Her Majesty's Secretary for Home Affairs, declining the directorship of the British Museum. May I see it? Okay. You put it very well, Nigel. As far as I can see, there's only one mistake. What's that? Instead of saying no, I'd like you to say yes. But I don't understand. You said you never wanted to go back to London. Only yesterday you... That was yesterday. I'm unpredictable, you know. If you like, I can give you my three reasons. First, I love you. Second, I love you. And third? Vanity. My awful vanity. I should like to be the wife of the director of the British Museum, especially if the director is you. Please think it over, darling. So, Meyer Isaacson, I feel compelled to make an important statement. Mrs. Nigel Armand, my dear wife, is the greatest woman in Egypt since Cleopatra. Don't you agree? Thoroughly, sir. I think we should leave Nigel to make his decision. Will you join me for a walk, Sir Meyer? Now, if it's not too far, don't forget, 5,000 years ago, my ancestors built the pyramids, and I'm still tired. <laughs> You've changed quite a bit, Ruby. I know how much you hate London, and still you want Nigel to accept. I'm not thinking of myself. I'm thinking of Nigel. There may come a time when he'll have nothing left but his work. Surprisingly unselfish of you. You've always considered me a hopeless case, haven't you? I made a bad diagnosis. I'm a pretty sharp observer, and rarely have I seen a man so happy in his marriage as Nigel. I hope he stays that way. He won't. I need your help, Doctor. I need it desperately. In what way? It's a long story. I don't know where to begin. Why not at the beginning? My memory for dates is very poor. The things I remember best are the hats and gowns I wore, and the way I felt when I wore them. But you doctors keep records, don't you? Yes. When was it that I first came to your office? Three years ago, in May, to be exact. It took me a long time to decide which dress I should wear. I wanted to impress you, you see. You certainly did. And that's why I chose my new dress from Worth. Such a lovely dress, and so expensive. I sold my last jewel to buy it. A ring which a former friend had given me in one of his uh, not too frequent moments of generosity. I was terribly nervous, but I flatter myself that nobody, not even you, the doctor, noticed it. Don't forget, then I was quite used to rather difficult situations. I'm Mrs. Cartwright. I have an appointment with the doctor. The appointment was for two o'clock, madam. I'm always late. I have no sense of time or distance. So this is Harley Street. Fascinating place, isn't it? One doctor beside the other. Well, I suppose we all have to pass through here on our way to the cemetery, hmm? Quite so, madam. Mrs. Cartwright is here, Sir Meyer. Sure, very. Didn't you give your real name, Mrs. Chepstow? My real name seems to close every door in London. I wanted to find yours open. My door is open to anyone. Is it? How nice. Then perhaps I might even sit down. Please do. Thank you. You're most kind. What brings you to me? My former husband had faith only in you. By the way, how is the old boy? Splendid. In India, the last I heard. And married again. How nice. I hope he has better luck. I hope so, too. I've always had the greatest admiration for you, Doctor. Even though you were quite instrumental in breaking up my marriage. As your husband's physician, I had to advise him to get a divorce. Of course. And you always give excellent advice, don't you, Samara? What can I do for you? I'm terribly sick. Don't ask me what my, my malaise is. I wouldn't know. But it upsets me greatly. Any definite symptoms? Many. For example, I cannot sleep. Not at all. Isn't it awful? How old are you? 
28. At least you could have said I don't look it. Will you come in here, please? Very well, nurse. This way, madam. And what is your verdict, doctor? You are in excellent health, physically. Your insomnia may have to do with your way of life. Drifting from one place to another. I adore your outspokenness, doctor. The cause of all your trouble is fear. Fear of age and fear of the future. I must admit I have been rather lonely lately, without even a good bank account to keep me company. Can you offer me some advice? Go somewhere where people don't know you. Find a man who loves you, marry him, be faithful to him, and I promise you you'll sleep. That's why I returned to London. It might be difficult for you here. Perhaps, but I can try, can't I? You see, I prefer England, Englishmen, and the pound sterling. The dollar has always eluded me, and I haven't very much confidence in marks or francs. You do as you please, madam. I wish you the best of luck. And you pity my poor victim, hmm? Frankly, yes. Why? Men are just begging to be lied to, so I lie. They don't fall in love with me. They never trouble to know me. They just fall in love, and they're cheated by their own imagination. Interesting viewpoint. But it's the truth. If I can have everything I want, money, pleasure, admiration, just by a little harmless lying, I'd be a fool not to lie, wouldn't I? Why did you pretend to be sick? Just to tell me all these none too flattering things about yourself? I'm in the mood for confession today. I would have gone to a priest, but I'm not pious. You are not sick either. Why confess to a doctor? I have my reason. And I'm going to take your advice. I found a man. I'll marry him. And remember that if you ever meet my victim, what you know of me, you know is my doctor. And doctors, like priests, are bound to secrecy. Don't forget that. Ever. I've been a doctor for a long time, madam. I know the ethics of my profession. And I've been a woman for rather too long a time. And I know the ethics of my profession. Good day. Five. I've arranged with clerk to give him the suite next to mine. Don't you think it's worth five pounds? Even the balcony is a joy. Come on, don't stand there. Help me. We've only two hours. You should have seen me with Isaacs. I was brilliant, I tell you. I hope it works. You think you will tell Mr. Ermin about our past? I don't know. It's up to fate. Anyway, I've done my best. Egypt and its old tombs. They bore me to death. What do you have to do to catch a man nowadays? The main thing is that you're beautiful. Lie still and relax. I'm going to read to you. The ancient burial place of the Egyptian kings called the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of the Kings, I'll remember that. Where, in 1881, the tomb of King Ramesses IV was discovered. Two years later, the tomb of Ramesses VI was discovered. Wait a minute, there's a Ramesses missing. What happened to him? In fact, that's all it says here. In 1895, a British expedition under the supervision of Mr. Nigel Armin. Ah, uh, now we're getting warm. Mr. Nigel Armin discovered the tomb of King Ramesses V. There's the missing Ramesses. I'm so relieved. Let's get rid of it is said here he's writing a book about his experiences. No doubt I shall add a few interesting chapters. <laughs> John, madame, he's in the lobby. We're just time. He will be up in a moment. Now, repeat it again for the last time, madame. Ramesses the fourth, Ramesses the sixth. Then the great discovery by Mr. Armin, Ramesses the fifth. 
mysterious Egypt, Valley of the Kings, Desert, Sphinx, Pyramids. Enough to sustain an amusing conversation with anyone. Oh, by the way, what's the name of that new writer he's always talking about? Shaw, sure, madame. I told it to you a hundred times. Georges Bernard Shaw. Yes. It's a name destined to be forgotten. I think I hear rain coming. Madame, please, keep this in your purse. I have it from my dear mama. It brings luck. Bless you. Well, I'll be quite comfortable as usual, I'm sure. How long do you intend to stay? How long do you intend to stay? Well, excuse me, Miss Chester, right? Mr. Arlen was surprised. When did you arrive? Only a moment ago. I meant to call on you first thing. I, I thought you'd be at Claridge's. Well, I couldn't get rooms there, the Derby, you know. So, remembering your recommendation, I came here. I have a lovely suite on this floor. Oh, I'm on this floor, too. Oh, you must admit it's destiny. I only admit a pleasant surprise. Well, I, I shall entertain you. I presume your time is taken. And it's a little your fault, you know. All your fascinating stories about Egypt and those lovely tombs have become quite an obsession with me. I'm just on my way to the museum. Oh, I have to go there, too. It's the first thing I have to do in London. I thought the first thing you had to do was to call on me. Well, I, I didn't realize how badly they needed me at the museum. Would you mind waiting five minutes while I brush up a bit? You, you really need a guide, you know. Oh, well, all right. I'll wait. Some more spaghetti, signora mia. No, Pepito, enough is enough. And you, bella donna mia. Do you want to kill me? <laughs> no, Pepito. Well, Madonna, beautiful woman. It also means a poison, doesn't it? It has two meanings, like everything. Being a hopeless optimist, I like to take the good one. To me, Belladonna means you. Well, let's see if I fit the description. Good evening, sir. A table? No, thank you. Maya. I sent them a telegram to meet me here. I didn't know that you would give me the first evening. I hope you don't mind. On the contrary, I'm most anxious to meet him. Oh, excuse me. Sir Maya, it's good to see you. Hello, old boy. It is good to see you. Sir Meyer Isaacson, Mrs. Chepstow. How do you do? But we know each other, Mrs. Chepstow, don't we? Oh, now you've spoiled it all. I wanted to keep it as a special surprise for Nigel that you were my doctor. But why? The ways of women are often mysterious, Nigel, for a short while at least. Oh, you're so right, Doctor. Now, won't you sit down? Thank you. We can strongly recommend the spaghetti. You are looking very well. I've had my first vacation in years in France. Oh. And there, I take it, you met Mrs. Chepstow? Yes. We were both lonely and we had a wonderful time together. Nigel was always talking about you. The greatest influence in his life, his guiding star. Nigel goes quite overboard in his likes. I hope you'll never go wrong. Why should I? Well, you might. We are all fallible, aren't we? Oh, buena sera, signor dottore. Really? What should it be? Just some coffee, Pepito. I'm not hungry. Oh, are you sick, Signor Luthor? No, no, just a little nervous. Too much work. I'll make you a good hot coffee. Thank you. Something wrong? No, nothing special in high school. Just preoccupied with the problem. Can I help you? You always said I was rather good at problems. No, this one has nothing to do with mathematics. Rather a matter of ethics. A patient came to see me today. An advanced and infectious case. Hopeless. A man or a woman? A patient who wants to get married. Fiancé is a wonderful person, a friend of mine. Why can't you warn your friend? My patient believes that as a doctor, I am bound to secrecy. Of course. Your patient is right. I've forgotten. My patient doesn't realize that I'm also bound to prevent the dangerous disease from spreading. I'll have to warn my friend. Oh, but you mustn't. You haven't any right to play God. You say your patient is hopeless, but how do you know? Perhaps a happy marriage might be the cure. You believe in miracles? Well, I believe in giving God, or whatever you call the good force, a chance to do things his way. Tell us your opinion, Mrs. Chepstow. 
Tell him I'm right, Ruby. Whatever I say, Samara will make his own decision. I don't believe my opinion can change it. I seem to have a slight headache. Do you mind if I leave? Let me take you home. No, no, thank you. I wouldn't like to deprive the doctor of your company. I'm sure you two have a lot to talk about. Just call me a cab, would you? I'll go with you. No, thank you. I'm making it easy for you, aren't I? It isn't easy for either of us. You see, Nigel and I... First you give me advice, and then you object to my taking it. You think Dr. Isaacson will tell Mr. Armin about our past? Oh, I'm sure of it. I've just wasted my time. I should have left Nigel alone the moment I knew he was a friend of Dr. Isaacson's. Thank you, Mary. You're such a comfort. All I have left. Give me my smelling sauce, please. It's in my bag. Well, at least I won't have to hear about Egypt and Ramesses and his rotten old mummy. Oh, here's your dear mama's good luck piece. It didn't work. I should have known. Perhaps the doctor did not say anything. My lord, it's impossible. Good, Cherry. When a man plays the piano in the middle of the night, he's worth another tie. What do you want me to do? Knock at his door? If you can see him from the balcony, he can see you too. He might join you. And let him tell me what a great disappointment I am? No, thank you. What are you doing? In the dark, men mostly follow their noses. for leaving so abruptly this evening. I hope the doctor didn't think me impolite. I suppose you two had a most interesting conversation. It was more of a monologue. What did he tell you? Oh, I did most of the talking. I spoke about my plans for these next months in Egypt and the fulfillment of everything I've worked for all these years. And I told him I was going to ask him to come with me as my wife. What did he answer? What do you answer? I had gambled against heavy odds and won. I was quite satisfied with my own cleverness. I had every reason to be proud. It was victory, sudden and complete. I was firmly convinced my trick had worked. One out, once and for all. Against you, against my past. I was almost happy. I started to like Nigel. Who could help liking a man who paid the bills? Gave one a brand new name for a badly used one? A new country? Egypt. I had no reason to complain. Not one. A beautiful house and garden. Many servants. All the things I'd done without for so many years. Now I had a home. Villa Belladonna, named after you, darling. In such a pleasant setting, I really intended to give a convincing performance of a respectable woman in love. Not an exciting role, but a challenge because of its novelty. 
And the engagement promised to be a long one. But I found the months that followed interminable. I saw no one but Nigel's dull collaborators and their still duller families. No one. And slowly all these lovely people and Egypt and the heat and the flies and Nigel's continuous kindness became a mountain of boredom. I am certain he married his sister. What else could he do? She was rich and powerful. And I suppose he waited until the first child was born and then he murdered her. Very simple, Professor Muller. Much too simple. We don't even yes, know him. gentlemen, we're forgetting the ladies. Oh, don't mind us. We love gossip. We were only discussing the marriage of Ramesses V. How disappointing. And I was hoping for a much more recent scandal. Weren't you, Yvonne? Scandal? What do you mean? I do not understand. I asked if you weren't interested in scandals. I am. Well, I hope we didn't say anything to upset her. What's wrong with your daughter, Professor? A lover's quarrel, probably. This morning she got a letter from her fiancé in Paris. It is not interesting. After all, our scandal is 3,000 years old. It is much older than that, I think. I placed the death of the Queen at the beginning of the 20th dynasty. Your mistake, my dear colleague. The hieroglyphics give us the exact date. All those questions. Madame, I brought you a scarf. It's getting cool. Thank you. Cook wants to know what you order for dinner tomorrow. Well, we're having the same guests, same conversation, same heat. Might as well have the same food. Madame Muller says her husband likes sour bratten. Sour bratten it should be. Ramesses with sour bratten. Sour bratten with Ramesses. A rather ordinary beginning for this, the most fateful evening of my life. Whoever cooks our destiny uses a curious recipe. In my case, boredom, one moment of kindness, and Yvonne, whom I disliked from the beginning because she was 17. Mind? Really, it's nothing. I love to cry. Doesn't help much. Why not try talking? To whom? Father's always busy with his Ramesses and. How about me? Strictly between us, I'm old enough to be a confidant. Nobody can help me. Did you have a quarrel with your fiance? No, only today I got such a sweet letter from him. He wants me to come back. I'll never see him again, never. I couldn't face him anymore. Was there another man? I met him at the polo field. He was very charming at first. I thought it would be just an amusing flirtation. He talked so well. I couldn't imagine that a man, any man, could be so mean, so low. If my fiancé ever finds out... Well, thank heavens men are trusting. And you can always lie. There are letters. Ooh. So the gentleman is trying to blackmail you. Hmm? I haven't any money and I can't ask father. He'd never believe there was nothing else but letters. There's only one way out. Give me that bag. No. Come on, give it to me. I'm going to kill him. That's what he deserves. Oh, I shouldn't if I were you. Killing is an awfully messy business. Perhaps I could get the letters back for you. But how? A little tact and persuasion. You trust me? I didn't know you could be so kind, madame. Nor did I. Now you dry your tears and stop worrying. And I'll go back to Ramesses. Oh, by the way, I forgot to ask. What is the gentleman's name? Baudi. Mahmoud Baudi. Mahmoud Baudi. Mahmoud Baroudi, a name out of a thousand and one nights. It fitted the surroundings. And protecting innocent young womanhood was a new and amusing role for me. This must be it.
looks like a, a harem. Why not? Well, it is forbidden. They cannot buy women anymore. What does it matter? We're not in the market anyway. My master is waiting. Mrs. Army. I hope you had no trouble finding my house. The street is rather obscure. No trouble at all. Splendid. May I offer you something? My servant Hamza is famous all over Egypt for his coffee. Thank you, no. I can only stay a moment. I'm sorry. Some other time, perhaps. Imshi Hamza. Allah. Then won't you come into my study? You'll feel more at home. This is where I really live. My house, it's a little like myself, half Oriental, half European. I inherited it from my father. If you had a little more time, I'd like you to see it. It's quite interesting. I'm sure it is. Uh, your message came yesterday. I must see you on private business. I couldn't sleep last night trying to imagine what it could be. I'm very impractical and not a businessman. From your collection of trophies, you're a sportsman. Not really, I'm too lazy, but... I admit, modestly, I'm rather good at polo. I played at Oxford. In fact, that was the only thing I learned there. It's a good game, if you like, falling from horses. And uh, meeting the right people? I haven't seen you at the polo field. But you did meet Yvonne Dupont. I hope you still remember her. I remember Yvonne as long as I live. She's an enchanting young lady. You are a friend of hers? Yes. Yes, a very good friend. Then I can be frank with you, Mrs. Armin. Won't you sit down? There was a time when Yvonne and I were very fond of each other. I hoped someday to marry her. It was rather a shock when I found that she already had a fiancé in Paris. Oh. And you still love her? Yes. I'd do anything to make her happy. Well, that, that makes my mission so much easier. You see, Yvonne would like her letters back. Her letters? You haven't destroyed them. Ah, I destroyed her beautiful letters. I couldn't do that, madame. With Ivan gone, they're all I've left. I'm alone, madame. I have no family, very few friends. Acquaintances, yes, but no friends. I don't think I shall ever marry. Now, what will be left when I'm old? Nothing but my memories, my souvenirs, letters. Do you think me ridiculous? Oh, no, no. I'm exactly the same as you. I'm delighted to find a man who is as sentimental as we women. Only last week I was discussing this emotion with a very close friend of my husband, Osman Pasha, the commandant of police. Perhaps you've heard of him. I've never met him, personally. Oh, well, that's too bad. I must arrange it. Um, this Osman Pasha, he's a realist. Has no feeling for sentiments at all. I suppose it's because of his profession, always dealing with criminals. But I know he'd be delighted to meet a man who wouldn't part of the memory. Not for 2,000 francs? Not for 10,000. Oh, Mahmoud Effendi, you are even more sentimental than I thought. <laughs> You're the first person I've met who lies just as well as I do. What kind of a compliment is this? You surpassed my expectations, and they were high. I'm very flattered, oh, Wait, but... wait, I haven't finished. Yeah. All of them? All. With your permission? 10,000 francs of dull reading. An investment in our friendship. Might turn out to be a bad investment. Impossible. 
I have an instinct for women. Quite possible. I have an instinct for men. Can I go out this well, way? Of course. Isn't it refreshing that two people at their first meeting can be so frank with each other? Many a great love story has started that way. What do you know about love? I'll tell you when we meet again. Make it soon. Never. The French have a proverb. If a woman says never, she means perhaps. And if she says perhaps, she means yes. When I say never to you, it means goodbye. Au revoir. Does your man always listen outside the door? Usually. But he's completely devoted and loyal. I hope your maid will be just as discreet. I will come back as soon as I can. I will. Thank you again. I'll never forget what you did for me. Look out for yourself, Yvonne. The girl can't be too careful, you know. Give my regards to your fiancé. And remember my advice. No letters. What a happy coincidence. Undoubtedly, we both came for the same reason, to say goodbye to Yvonne, a great love. What a pity you missed her. Goodbye, great love. And now what? Well, I've seen the pyramids. The Sphinx has no secrets for me. And I've been cheated by every rug dealer in the bazaar. Have you something more amusing to offer? Just myself. Not very much, I must say. Still, I must consider your investment. I haven't my watch. Have you the time? The rest of the evening. <laughs> Aren't you investing too much? I told you my husband expects me home. Your husband is at the excavation, frantically digging for the remains of Ramesses V. You're surprisingly well informed. I even know that he intends to leave you alone for some time. Rather careless of him. Not at all. He knows me. I know you better. We don't have to lie to each other because we're alike. You want everything you can get exactly as I do. If there is no danger. And I should warn you, I'm not writing any letters. Believe me, you're the first woman I've When I you met. saw me, it was like a stroke of lightning. Your heart stood still. I know the text. I'm not lying now. You don't have to talk so much. Not that I don't like to hear it. It isn't necessary. I'm not 17 like you are. sooner than you expected. Perhaps this afternoon. Oh, don't work the poor chaps too hard. It's getting hotter and hotter. Give them a rest. Anything else? Nothing, sir. Only I would like to ask you a personal favor. Go ahead. Anything I can do. Except one thing. I can't talk to the commandant of police about your promotion. Oh. Because I've already written in that you're the best man in the service. And he agrees. You're very kind. Thank you so much, sir. Well, I... I had to tell him the truth, Captain Ahmed. Hello, Muller. 
Good news from Gretchen? Nothing important. She worries if I'm eating enough. <laughs> Who is your letter from? Ruby? Yes, she hasn't been feeling very well. There's all the time something wrong with women. I always say women are wonderful, but they need too many repairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing serious. Thank you, Abdullah. Ruby hasn't left the villa since my departure. She says I rest 24 hours on weekdays and 25 on Sundays. No visitors. It's a pity our life here is so primitive. Egypt. The climate is so amusing. Getting used to it. Lately. The nights are so beautiful. And the days? I don't know anymore. I sleep. Marie is infuriated with me. She says I need the sunshine. Tell her it's bad for your complexion. No, with French you must use logic. I tell her that I go out at night because it's the thing to do. And that one meets the most fascinating people. For example? Burglars. A night watchman. Mm. Astronomers. mention that. Good morning, madame. It's two o'clock. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Have you no sense? Where is this going to lead us? I'm in no mood for lectures, Mary. Go to bed. I'll undress myself. We will find ourselves in the divorce court again if you keep on. Nonsense. Nigel will be home tomorrow, and I'll be a dutiful wife again. I know when it's time to stop. That may not be as easy as you think. Oh, go away and leave me alone. Très bien. One day you may be alone and old. The very things I'd always dreaded. Being alone, being old. That's why I'd said goodbye to Barodi, ended the pleasant little interlude once and for all. At that moment, I didn't think I cared. It had always been easy for me to turn off my emotions whenever they interfered with my interests. Why should it be different now? My interests were with Nigel. He returned in the morning. I had passed a sleepless night, but I was ready to answer all his questions. He didn't ask any. He just trusted. And when you wrote that you missed me, I couldn't stay away. Oh, I tried to work feverishly. But even more, I noticed that my heart wasn't in it. And so he urged that I take a rest. He didn't have to try very hard to persuade me. How long can you stay? A week, I thought. Only a week? I'd hoped you could stay longer. I know it's selfish of me. You've been married to your work for a long time, and to me for only a year. But please stay longer. I need you. Really, I do. I will, darling. I was sincere. Believe me, I wanted to close the chapter, turn the page. I couldn't. As the weeks went by, my life with Nigel became unbearable. I couldn't forget Baroudi. I thought about him day and night. All the time. All the time. Did you deliver my letters? Oui, madame. All of them. Did he give you one for me? No, madame. I'm happy to say no. And if you want to know why, look in today's paper. You had better hang on to what you have.
I'll be with you in a moment, darling. Something wrong? Nothing. Will you have some sherry? Please. I've heard from Muller and I'll have to go back to the valley soon. Singing is driving me crazy. It does get on one's nerves, doesn't it? What is it, Ruby? I know it's childish, but I'm afraid to be alone again. Then why don't you come back with me? No. No, I don't be a nuisance. But why don't we enjoy these last few days? Meet new people, have dinner in town, or, or invite them here. I'm vain, you know. I'm married to a famous man, and I want to show him off. Can you blame me? Hmm. expect to stay in Cairo, Mrs. McCormick. My husband wanted to leave last week, but something came up. Something important. Oh, yes, quite important. So we decided to stay a little longer. We decided. I have nothing to say. That's how it is with us, Mrs. Arnold. I run the business. Mrs. McCormick runs the family. But I am happy we stayed and met you. I'm a little out of practice. Oh, you play beautifully. And Mr. Baroudi dances divinely. Oh, perhaps I should play a polka. You know, I love to exhibit my repertoire. Thank you, Miss Darmin, but Jean and Oh, I... it's such a beautiful night. Moonlight and stars. Well, I'll try to play something to fit the mood. It's cool outside, Jean. Don't forget to take a wrap. All right, Mother. I'll be right back. Really, ideal for poets and young love. It is, Mrs. Army. Why don't you answer my letter? I'm very busy, as you can see. I don't invite all these dull people just to talk to you. When can we meet? Be careful. We have a big program. The pyramids, ride through the desert, picnic on the Nile. It sounds charming. When? I write you from the States, don't forget. They make a handsome couple, Jean and Prince Baroudi. Would you care to see the garden? I'd be delighted. States, New York, the wide open spaces. I'm very anxious to see them. You don't mind giving up Egypt for me? For you, anything. I'm very much alone here. I have very few friends. Acquaintances, yes. No friends. We won't disturb you. We just want to see the garden. Don't look after Mrs. Armin or you'll make me jealous. She's stunning. Is she? Perhaps. I had noticed. I have eyes only for you. He hasn't actually proposed yet, but he will. I'm sure he will. No doubt. It's a very advantageous match for him. Of course. For us, too. He's very democratic. He doesn't care about his title. Still, he's a prince. Is he? He said so himself. But I presume you've made thorough inquiries? No. We just assumed that everything was... Do you think we should? I would. Oh, Mrs. Armin, if you know something, I can keep a secret. It'll be strictly confidential. Tell me. I know I shouldn't have brought this up.
Do come in. Where are they? Gone to the States. The wide open spaces. Father, mother, and daughter. And you are here to guard the luggage, I suppose. Correct. And to give you a sad message. I can imagine. Gina's sorry she can't go picnicking with you today. Her parents don't want an Egyptian prince for a son-in-law. You had nothing to do with this change of mind. Mr. McCormick had you investigated, I suppose. He found out about your debts and they made him very indignant. And then there was some scandal. Cheating at cards or something. Innocent little things. But hard for an American businessman to swallow. And who gave him the idea to be so thorough? I didn't. I like to strangle you. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Daughters don't always agree with their parents. No doubt. But before you go, look on the desk. That check won't be stopped if you don't attempt to see the girl before she leaves for home. You see, I do my best to provide for my friend. Not bad for a month's work, hmm? Far cry from millions. Yes, you have. The millions are uncertain. What is certain with you around? Only this, that I should never have left you. I missed you so much. I can't imagine how much. Let's be friends again. With all the consequences? With all the consequences. darling. Oh, it's you. I had no idea. Don't disturb yourself. I can only stay five minutes. Things are in an uproar at home. Someone's beginning to miss you? Oh, no. Caesar's wife is above reproach, you know. This is something far more world-shaking. Darling, you're the first of the outer circle, I mean, to hear the colossal news. Ramis's mummy is about to be unveiled. Congratulations. Oh, don't be so blasé. This great scientific event has repercussions for us. I must spend a week at the tomb. <laughs> Nigel insists I have a first-hand view of the mummy. It's a kind of honor, like the Victoria Cross, which I shall bear with all my other crosses. What else can you do as an obedient wife? I hope you'll have a pleasant time. But wait, I haven't finished. After everyone has admired the mummy, we're planning a great social affair in the desert of all places. Big to do in a tent. You're invited. Do you think it wise for us to appear in public together? A whole week without you is more than I can bear. <laughs> and Ramis's mummy can't replace you. So don't look so sour and say you'll come. Very well. I shall be delighted. You're in such bad humor today. Let's not talk about it. Something affecting us? Yes and no. The money question has become unpleasantly pressing. I wanted to use McCormick's check to calm my creditors, but it wasn't enough, so I put it on some horses. It's hopeless. Nigel was quite generous on my birthday. Two hundred pounds. I'll send it. Don't bother about it, darling. It isn't enough. There must be some way I can help. I'll have to leave the country. Perhaps I'll go to America. America? You've heard from Jean. I know you have. Don't get excited, darling. Yes, Jean has written she'll be 21 soon and she'll have money of her own, she says. I'd kill her if she comes, if she does. I don't think you have enough courage. 
Jean doesn't stand between us. Nigel does. Oh, I wish he were dead. What did you say? Hmm? Nothing. Jean, I knew it. Mind your own business, will you? Tear it up. I want you to tear it up. Back again where we started. Great love. Little courage. No money. And it would be so easy. What you're thinking is impossible. The life we are leading is impossible, too. Always meeting in secret. Always in danger. And no hope. The circumstances are perfect. King Ramses' mummy could help us. I'm in no mood for joking. Neither am I, darling. Nigel will be the first one to enter the tomb, won't he? I expect so. A dangerous undertaking. The first one to discover one of those tombs was Sir... I forgot the name. One beautiful morning, after years of hard work, he broke the seal of an inner tomb. Another beautiful morning, a few weeks later, he was dead. A mysterious sickness. The doctors looked for an unknown micro. But the newspapers and all the other gossips convinced the world that the dead king had taken his vengeance. A curse. A silly superstition. A helpful superstition. If your husband's predecessor had been poisoned... But the doctors would find out. There are poisons. Difficult to detect. In small doses. Impossible to detect if you believe in curses. Or look for unknown microbes. I can't do it. Believe me, I can't. All right, let's forget it. I must go now. Goodbye, darling. Tell me you love me. You've never said it. I'll do anything you want. I love you so much. But I want to destroy everything that comes between us. Sit. Me cousin, doing work. Me Hamza. All right, bring us the coffee, Abdallah. Me Hamza. Uh, never mind, make it quick. started excavating ten years ago, Mr. Armand. That's right. After many failures, you succeeded in locating the entrance to the now world-famous tomb. Four years ago, the first anteroom was discovered. You call it the Royal Chamber, if I'm not mistaken? That's perfectly correct, Mr. Smith Barrington. The room was filled with the personal belongings of the King. You keep on working right through the hot season? We can't. Don't forget the objects we find in the tomb haven't been subject to changing temperatures for thousands of years. What do you do about that? Each year, we bury the entrance of the tomb with gravel and rocks and re-establish as far as we can the original conditions. And today, you're opening the inner tomb, which you believe to hold the remains of Ramesses V. I'm sure of it. The seals on the doorway were unbroken. Well, the readers of the London Times will be very interested in this, Mr. Armin. I'm grateful to you. Thank you. We well, Americans used to stronger stuff, Mr. Armin. Hasn't anything sensational happened in all these years? An earthquake or a kidnapping? <laughs> 
I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you, sir. No human interest story? My article has to compete with the World's Heavyweight Championship. Well, let's see. No, nothing's happened. Except that I was married. That might not be as sensational to your readers as it is to me. Well, if we could run a picture of Madame with the article, it would. Tell me, Mrs. Armin, aren't you afraid to look at the mummy? There's a curse, you know. Afraid? No. I'm not superstitious. Hold it! Steady. All right, thank you. That's all. And now, may we have one more, please, with everyone in? Dr. Mueller, Mr. Mueller, if you'll step in, please. Bakari, the guests are arriving. All right, make it right away. And then the American reporter began talking about the superstition. It's perfect. Let us hope. Nigel, you remember Mr. Baroudi, don't you? Oh, of course I do. Happy you came. I wouldn't miss such an opportunity, Mr. Army. Thank you. Come now. We are now going into the tomb. The ladies should be careful not to touch the walls. They have been cleaned for 3,000 years. Find the step, please. Watch the steps, please. Careful, ladies and gentlemen, of the wars. The room over here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to enter the inner chamber. The outer shrines encasing it have already been taken out. The coffin itself is pure gold. In fact, so heavy we had to erect this machine in order to lift the lid. When I give the word, will you start the winch? Come now. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you with all my heart for the interest you've shown in coming here. I especially want to thank His Excellency, Mustafa Pasha, and for the assistance his government has given us. I know that in honoring me, you also pay tribute to Professor Muller, Professor DuPont, and my other collaborators, the curators of the Egyptian Museum, and the 
curators of the British Museum. This, indeed, is my proudest moment. I am very happy to be able <laughs> I can't breathe, Doctor. It's nothing. I'm sure it'll be all right. You've been working too hard, old fellow, that's all. We've got to get him home. He needs rest. Here, let me help you, old chap. The patient's getting on as well as can be expected. He's resting quietly. May I have a word with you? Please. Will you excuse us? Won't you sit down, Doctor? Thank you. Oh. Well, I shouldn't worry too much, Mrs. Arlen. This uh, sickness came on so suddenly. Well, if no one got sick, we poor doctors would starve. I examined your husband thoroughly, Mrs. Arlen. Blood pressure's low, heart beats fast, a little too fast. Vague pains, kind of headache. Perhaps it's just nerves. Nigel has been so engrossed in his work. Well, maybe. Yeah. To be frank, I haven't arrived at any definite diagnosis. But I gave him a sedative. That's good in any case. Plenty of rest, absolute quiet, till we see more clearly. Could he have uh, contracted an infection from one of the workmen? That's an interesting idea. Yes, malaria, perhaps. No, 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 no. He has no temperature. He doesn't drink, does he? Hardly at all. Contrary to the usual belief, alcohol is an excellent preventive in these hot climates. I'm completely dried out myself. I'm pouring you a drink, Doctor. Oh, please don't trouble, please. Oh, well, since you have it poured, I'll take it. Thank you. And keep your chin up and just give the patient light food and lots of liquid. Lots of liquid. Oh, thank you, Aunt. Tell him to have faith in his doctor. That's most important. I'm sure he has the utmost confidence in you. Well, I don't know. He spoke of calling in someone else. A Dr. Isaacson. Dr. Isaacson is just a friend of Nigel's. He lives in London, and I wouldn't dream of disturbing him, since you say it's nothing serious. Please don't hesitate on my account. I'm willing to consult with anyone if the patient wants it. Dr. Isaacson has a certain vogue in London, but I'm sure he's no more qualified than you. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> Believe me, I can handle the case alone. We must pull him through together. Well, I'll look in again tomorrow. Another drink before you go, Doctor. No, thank you, not now. Oh, now, I really mustn't. I have several more visits to make this morning. And you know, most of my patients are just as hospitable as you. <laughs> Good morning. Don't trouble. Me to tell you not to worry about a thing. You'll be all right in a couple of days. You must be quiet. Oh. Don't leave me, darling. You 
should sleep. I will soon. From that moment on, time stood still. There was no difference between day and night. Every hour seemed like a thousand. I wanted to leave that sick room, that horrible house. I wanted to sleep again. I couldn't sleep. I had to sit with Nigel, day after day, holding his hand, watching him. If only I hadn't had to watch him. Nigel. Nigel never complained. He seemed always to be apologizing for his illness. He smiled, never suspecting a thing. And like Judas, I had to smile back. Innumerable times the door opened, letting Hamza in, letting Hamza out. And there was always your name again, Dr. Isaacson. You spoke of calling in someone else, a Dr. Isaacson. Your name, a constant reminder of my guilt, of my fears. I tried to get strength from Baroudi. I told you not to send for me. Darling, don't be angry. I had to see you. Why? What's so urgent? Nigel wants to send for another doctor. What? An old friend of his from London, Dr. Isaacson. He had me write a cable. I don't want another doctor, under any circumstances. When I was with him, I wasn't weak anymore. Everything seemed simple. We want to be free and together. Don't forget that. Oh, darling. When I'm with you, everything's so easy, so simple. A few more weeks, darling. They'll pass. They'll pass, Baroudi said. But they didn't. There was always the same question, every day. News from Isaacson? Not yet. He must be on holiday. Send another cable, will you, darling? I will. You can trust me. You can trust me. You can trust me. Yes, madam. I sent for Dr. Isaacson. I heard you promise Mr. Amin so many times you would do it. I kept your promise. How thoughtful of you. I suppose if I told you that it had slipped my mind, you wouldn't believe me. No. You're right. It didn't. I hate Dr. Isaacson. I don't want him here. And you know why. I want Mr. Amin to get well. How sweet of you. My husband will be eternally grateful. Here, take it to him. Tell him what you did. Tell him I'm a liar. He won't believe you. He'll be disappointed. Because he trusts me. I won't see Mr. Armin anymore. I'm leaving. I'm going back to France. My baggage is ready. Well, I'm not holding you back. I've had enough of you. Bon voyage. Here. Take your money and go. Well, what are you waiting for? A reference? Very well. I'll give you one. Twenty years of faithful service. Twenty years of meddling in other people's affairs. Twenty years, what we went through together. It could not be printed in school books. But I love being with you. Inside, inside, you are not bad. You are generous and gay. Now you've changed. Hi, to this man, Baroudi. Keep your sermons to yourself. He is evil. He will destroy you. Why do you see him? Why is Amza in the house? Why do you not want to help your husband? Well, do what you want with your silly accusations. Go to my husband. Go to the police. Not turn against you. I can only beg you to come with me before it is too late. Leave me alone. Once and for all, I beg of you, leave me alone. Mm. 
Adieu, chérie. Tell me what happened. Is it the end? Oh, that's it. I've completely forgotten. When Dr. Isaacson comes, we're lost. We've got to get away now. Nonsense. It's not that serious. Try to be calm, darling, will you? We'll have to change our plan. Finish it quickly. Tonight. Dr. Isaacson will come too late. And Dr. Harding will give all the medical explanations. You see? If we keep our heads, nothing is lost. But you don't understand. It's not that easy. Anything else? Something you haven't told me? For heaven's sake, what is it? When I came here, I knew what you'd say. And I was afraid. Because it can't be done. It's impossible. I tried to force myself all these weeks. Really, I tried, but it's not in me. Don't you understand? It's not in me. Well, this comes rather late. What do you propose to do? I brought you my jewels. All the money I have. I'll do anything you want if only you'll take me away. I'll work for you, steal for you, anything but this. You're really serious. Won't oh, take me away before it's too late. Darling, I've listened to you very attentively. Now it's my turn to talk. You know my situation. I'm desperate. I need money, lots of it. I could have got it from another woman, but you destroyed that chance. I didn't mind because I believed that in the end we'd be together, just as we planned, rich and free. You'll have to live up to my expectations. But you don't understand. It isn't that I don't want to. I can't. And I can't let you go. I have invested too much. So that's what I am to you. An investment. We made a pact. We are partners. Do you think you can break that pact? You're not as smart as I thought. You can't force me. You're just as guilty as I am. I could go... Don't be foolish. There's no evidence against me. None at all. I didn't live in your house. I'm not Nigel's heir. I had neither the motive nor the opportunity. You'd give me away. It's no crime to be in love with you. I didn't know you were trying to kill your husband. When Hamza told me, I couldn't believe it. I asked you to come here, made you confess. You tried to buy my silence with your jewels and money, but I refused. <laughs> It's up to you, darling. You can have me as your partner, or as your enemy. Make your choice. says you must have your medicine in time. Well, let's forget Dr. Harding. Come, let me look at you. You look tired, darling. Sit down. There are a few things I'd like you to take care of. 
Just in case. Nigel, please don't talk like that. Oh, don't misunderstand me, darling. I want to live very much. Whatever my sickness is, I haven't given up yet. I intend to go on fighting. Just in case something should happen. I'd like to leave my house in order. Will you help me? Yes. I want you to know how very happy you've made me. I try to thank you. And I will. It's in the top drawer of the desk. You'll need someone to help and assist you. So I've named Isaacs as my executor. He's efficient, honest, and loyal. I know you don't like each other, but I want you to forget the past. That's all I had to say, darling. So you see, it didn't take too long. Now I'll take my medicine. Nigel, why did you say Dr. Isaacson and I don't like each other? What did he tell you? That hurt isn't important, darling. Not anymore. He only did what he thought he should. What did he tell you? Everything. The trip to his office. The whole story. He told you, and you married me. How could you? Because I loved you. It's that simple. I didn't say anything before because I... I wanted our marriage to have a chance. A real chance. You see... Isaacson judges everyone by what they've done, what they haven't done. He's just a hopeless materialist. I'm not. The past didn't matter to me. I married you. I trusted you. And I hoped that someday you'd love me. Did I succeed? I did as you told me. I went home, changed my dress, and called Hamza. He gave me the box. I entered it into a glass, all of it. Then I went into Nigel's room. He was asleep. I said, it's time for your medicine. He drank it. I waited until the end. I knew you'd have the courage. I love you for it. Is there anything else you ought to know? Was Hamza with you? I left him with the... I left him to guard the room. Then I came here. No one saw me. Good. Wait. I took a carriage. Perhaps I shouldn't have. But all I could think of was to get here. The coachman might remember. Better send him away. I'll be back in a moment. remember a large one. You can't be too careful from now on. You can rely on me. I won't be weak anymore. We're partners from now on. To us. To us. Now you can never leave me. Even if you want to. Sorry? Are you? I'll tell you what to do next. First, Isaacson. Possibly shoot Nick London. Early in the morning, give him the sad news. 
You want them just for a funeral. You think of everything, don't you? I want us to go to his village. Stay there until I send for him. Awfully hot in here. Shall I tell Dr. Harding when he comes? Harding? Better send him a message. I fear a sudden turn for the worse. That'll prepare him. Who else? Well, there is no danger. Mary. She left me. I forgot to tell you. Can you imagine? After 20 years, she left me. Still, I don't mind. She wouldn't fit into our future lives. She's much too decent. What? What did you say? Speaking about our future life, darling. I'm sure you've made plans. What do you intend to do? Marry me? Get my money? Leave me? Or if I don't let you go, kill me? Tell me now, you see, we won't be able to see much of each other. Not until I'm a rich widow, anyway. Nigel left me everything. There'll be plenty of money for us. First for us, and for you. That's how you planned it, isn't it? Isn't it? a year ago. I'm still not sorry. I'm not a judge, not a priest. I can't punish you or relieve your conscience. Why are you telling me all this? I didn't want your confidence. Look. Tomorrow at noon, I'll be arrested. I was given this day of grace in which to tell Nigel. I couldn't. I can't face him. You haven't changed much, Ruby. Enough courage to cheat, enough to kill, but not enough to confess. If you can tell me, why can't you tell him? I don't love you. You are incapable of loving anyone but yourself. The trouble with you, Doctor, is you don't believe in miracles. Do you remember the story of the wicked Lord who tried to make love to a virtuous lady? He used an innocent mask to cover his evil face. After he'd learned to love her, he wanted to tell her the truth. Take off the mask. He couldn't. It had become part of his skin. This happened once upon a time. It happened again. Hiding. Here, darling. You must tell him, please. Very often I've had to tell patients they would die. It was always hard. This task is harder. 
Nigel will have nothing left. Nothing. Not even his faith. Well, Mrs. Armand, I would like to inform you that you are now the wife of the director of the British Museum. Here's my letter of acceptance. Wonderful. When do we leave with the next boat? I'm ready. What do you say, Doctor? You'll have company on your trip to London. Congratulations, Nigel. I shouldn't have thought you could leave Egypt so easily. What will King Ramesses do without you? You're right. My conscience will bother me. We'll have to say goodbye to him. I have a splendid idea, darling. We'll order a carriage and drive to the tomb tonight. All three of us. Yes. Yes, that'll be lovely. The valley will be beautiful by moonlight. Let's see it for the last time. this letter, you will know the truth. Try to remember me, not as the woman I am, but as the woman you believe me to be. Don't come to see me when I stand trial. I'm not lying anymore when I say, now, Ruby. Will you give us to Nigel when I'm gone? Carriage is here, darling. I brought you a cake. You? Why so serious? What have you two been talking about? The only thing that Maya and I have in common, darling. You. Sorry, Ahmed Effendi. Mr. Armin can't see anyone yet. Uh, but perhaps I can answer your questions. We were together at the tomb when the accident happened. It was an accident. There can't be the slightest doubt. Mrs. Armin was very gay and full of plans the entire evening. She decided to rest while Mr. Armin and I climbed the hill to see the valley in the moonlight. Uh, you are familiar with the excavations? Quite. Well, then you remember the rock slide near the entrance must have been sitting there when it broke loose. We heard the rumble and turned back. By the time we reached her, she was dead. Buried under tons of stone. A most regrettable accident. I'd call it an act of God. May I take you to the gate? Unfortunately, there is a file in my office still marked incomplete. Before I can close it, I will have to ask certain questions of Mr. Arnold. Please tell him I see him later. You worked with Mr. Armin for many years, Ahmed Effendi. You must be his friend. I would like to call myself that, sir. But then I can be frank. The dead cannot be revived, and they cannot be punished. And no one wants to punish the innocent. Mr. Armin lives in a curious world of his own. A world more real, perhaps, than ours. He has lost much. I hope he can keep what he still has. His splendid illusion. I tell him you were here, why you came? Yes, sir. Tell him I came to express my sympathy. Everyone understands his grief. Mrs. Arnold was a very remarkable lady. <laughs> <laughs> 